Yes, people. So today we're going to talk about Borussia Dortmund's development process, and let's just get straight into it. Listen, they have developed players like Lewandowski, Erling Haaland, Jadon Sancho, Drew Bellingham, Usman Dembele, um, Pierre Aubameyang. The list goes on in terms of elite players they've developed over the years, and it's just no um coincidence that they keep doing it and there's certain things they do at the academy level right now there's a bunch of ballers that they've got at the academy that you know it's just it's just an ongoing successful system and you know you look at what they're doing and what they've done and we're going to describe to you today what sort of stuff they've been doing i've been stressing this all over my channel you know what i've been talking about most of the time is about speed processing of information you being an intelligent footballer or working out when and why as opposed to how they are big on decision making they use two softwares they use well they use two things one's a software that's called be your best which is a vr simulation and they use something called a football bonnet if i said it correctly which is something they go in there about once a week which allows them to get by an extra five thousand touches on on the ball for x every year so over 20 over four years they would have developed um at least twenty thousand extra touches at, at top of their training sessions that they do and so we're going to go into deep diving today about this and see how you can incorporate it in your training session. So <clears throat> they describe the BFS as a VR simulation that allows players to basically adapt to decision making uh, processes that allows you to take it into real life. So you have to check your shoulder, you have to be able to scan and we want to go in detail about the scanning. And he said, if you have a solution, I'll be your best. I can say that once per week, you can come early. You can also train for four or five hours a week at home. You can do those extra hours. And he said, another advantage is that they can see what is important in the visual scanning. I could tell you that is very important if you go into the VR simulation. They went on to speak about that the under 12s, which is amazing. They start training or they do training 15 hours a week. So. I know over here in the UK, they don't do as near enough training sessions um, as most European clubs do. Um, that's five, if you're talking about five days a week, excluding match day and the rest day, you're talking about three hours a week training. Um, that's how long and how much time they're on the ball. And if you could look at yourself, have you been doing, if you're doing three hours a day on the ball, then you can see how far off that you are from touching this level of football. Uh, they go on to talk about the be your best software they says it's not just about the number of scans but the timing of them so for me the time of them is much more important than the number if you let players train on be your best they can get a feel for when they're able to do their scan and that's something that i believe when everyone you know got the video and Wenger said you know the top players they scan x amount of times per second than the average player do this then we had all players doing these Instagram reels just passing off the ball and saying this is what a pro player does this is what an amateur player does and they're still not getting it it's not about how many times you scan it's the timing because if you scan late you can get picked if you scan too early that picture that you had previously would have been gone that guy probably moved off or probably pressed you early so it's about timing because we've got something called blind spots and this is where I spoke again previously on the previous video about timing of scans and so this is what they said so when the ball is free when there has been a long pass from player a to player b that is the right time for me to do a scan the next question is where you are scanning is it the left shoulder or the right shoulder where is the blind spot and he said i talked with our under 19 coach he says that if a midfielder only looks over their left shoulder for years and years, that it's pretty easy to stop them because they will never turn to their right because they're unable to get any information on that side. And this is amazing. They, they, he says that we start our cognitive training at the age of 11. Looking at eye movements, perception, visual scanning, we have been focused on this cognitive criteria for six or seven years now. So we have data on all on all of our players that we have collected two or three times a year twice a year for example our players will go into the football net which i'm going to talk about that in a minute and play 30 balls in a standardized setting 16 on the right side 
16 on the left side 16 in front and, and 16 behind in the end you can see how fast and precise they act in each area we have an average score and we often see a big difference in perception between the right side and the left side if their scanning is not good on one side then their reaction will not be good on that side most of the time it's not about technique <laughs> this is amazing it says the emphasis is on perception number one decision making number two and working on the weak foot number three he says what pace is the ball coming at what spin is on the ball what angle is it coming at it is about visual scanning and a clean first contact and then it is a space that that you can create this is amazing guys you understand i'm going to show you this foot on it um uh, that they actually have this is what they do they go in here and they do an extra 5,000 touch of the ball per year they have to go in there every week once a week it's a compulsory they have to go inside the foot monitor once a week and this machine just allows them to just fire off because it's not you passing I know we've got like a simulation where people hit off the wall based on the lights and I think that one is probably as good as it gets but this one why is it so great it's the ball is firing out to you at different pace at different angles and different heights and different speed different spin so it's different it's like a level above where we've got people's um you know with the wall and whatever lights up so this is where you know for me it's just it, it's amazing so you may think okay how could i get this into my session what can i do this is something that you've got to wait for <laughs> in my new book that's coming out which is called mind games i'm gonna have loads of these drills and that's why my content of me doing these videos has been reduced because i've been working doing these books and doing these materials so once the book is released in a two months time you will have access to majority of this stuff that i'm talking about that is going to be able to help you in your spare time until then let's keep going